Okay. Hey folks, I wanted to take a minute today to talk about why it is not likely that we'll have a large wave of foreclosures hitting the market in the near future. Uh, to give a little background, we think back to last year when there were a lot of people out of work because of the pandemic and many of them were having trouble making their mortgage payments. Not surprising. Forbearance plans were put in place which allowed them to postpone payment on those mortgages basically. Now those forbearance plans are coming to an end and a lot of people are concerned that as those people start having to make those payments again, they're going to have trouble, we're going to see foreclosures, and we'll see something similar to the wave of foreclosures that happened after the housing bubble about 15 years ago. However, there are several reasons why that likely won't be the case. The first reason is that there are fewer homeowners in trouble this time. Now, that might sound a little surprising because frankly, we know that the pandemic has been hard on a lot of people. But think about this. After the last housing crash, about 9.3 million households lost their homes to a foreclosure, a short sale, or because they simply gave the house back to the bank. However, as stay-at-home orders were issued last year, the fear was that the pandemic would impact the housing industry in the same way. Many thought that there would be up to 30% of all mortgage holders who would enter the forbearance program. Now that would indicate that about a third of all mortgage holders were going to be in desperate enough times that they would try to postpone the payment of their mortgages. However, in reality, it was only about 8.5% that actually entered the program. That tells us that over 90% of homeowners felt confident that they could continue to make their regular mortgage payments. And today, the number of mortgages still in some sort of a forbearance program is down to 2.2% of all mortgages. So recently, the total number of mortgages still in a forbearance program stood at 1.221 million. We'll call it 1.2 million homes uh, or mortgages in forbearance. But even that is obviously far fewer than the 9.3 million households that lost their homes just over a decade ago. Now, most of the mortgages in forbearance still have enough equity to sell their homes. Now, that's our second point, and let's remember that one because that's important. We started out with the fact that there were fewer homes in trouble, fewer mortgages in trouble, this time than there were 15 years ago. And then we recognize that most of the mortgages in forbearance still have enough equity to sell their homes. Because housing prices have gone up so rapidly over the last two years, of the 1.2 million homes, uh, homeowners still in a forbearance, 93% have at least 10% equity in their homes. Now that's important because it means they can sell their home pay off the related expenses, and still walk away without facing the hit on their credit that a foreclosure or a short sale would create. Now that's 93% of the homes. There are still 7% that don't have the option of selling as easily, perhaps. But even if the entire 7% of those 1.2 million homes went into foreclosure, it would only be about 85,000 homes. Uh, 85,400 specifically. Now, to put that in context, think about how many homes were foreclosed on over the three years leading up to the pandemic. In 2017, it was over 314,000. In 2018, it was 279,000. In 2019, it was 277,000. So the probable number of foreclosures coming out of the forbearance programs is nowhere near the number of foreclosures that impacted the housing crash 15 years ago, and it's actually less than one-third of any of the three years prior to the pandemic. So that's our second point. There are fewer houses in trouble, and those houses still have more equity, which means they can still 
be sold without going through a foreclosure or short sale program. Now the third point to remember is that the current market could absorb those listings coming onto the market. So let's say that those 84,000 houses came onto the market. Well, what would be the result? Well, when the foreclosures hit in the market back in about 2008, there was an oversupply of houses. Today, it's just the opposite. In 2008, there was better than a nine-month supply of listings on the market. Today, we're less than a three-month supply. So look at a graph that shows the difference between those two markets. Uh, what this means is that if those houses came onto the market, they could be absorbed very easily because there are still people looking to buy. That 84,000 would not make a huge impact on the market overall. Now, all of these things come together and it explains why Ivy Zellman, the founder of the major housing market analytical firm Zellman and Associates, recently said, quote, the likelihood of us having a foreclosure crisis again is about zero percent, unquote. Is that right? Well, probably, hopefully. None of us can say for certain what will happen yet in the future. But these are some good things to keep in mind as you're deciding what's going to be best for you and your family moving forward, considering what the market may do. If you think that you have questions about buying or selling, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to discuss your situation. You'll have to make the final decisions, of course, but I'd love to be able to help. 801-556-2259.